Welcome to Watercolor Studio 42. Uh, today I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes here um, working and touching up uh, the painting I started last time. It may have been last time, I hope. I, I, I kind of lose track of some of the, the times. This seems to be the most recent one I've worked on. And uh, so, uh, this was a this was a scene, and uh, I take a lot of times for magazines. Uh, this happened to be in Touch magazine. Uh, sometimes I I take the uh, picture, and this is sort of a elongated photograph, and so what I do is, is just crop it a bit by folding it up, and just isolating it so that it is not quite as elongated any longer. Uh, but uh, it's more of a horizontal uh, uh, picture that I'm working from. I don't need all that extra water down below. So I kind of... Uh, now, what I want to do here is uh, just to show you a little bit. Uh, you, you, one thing I always emphasize, it's always better not to overwork, you know, to get your pictures too, too busy. So... Uh, uh, that's the thing to remember. Uh, so, but I do want to fill in uh, a little bit in this uh, picture that I have here. Uh, it's a little bit darker in this corner, right over here. Uh, and, and I work off of uh, like triangles, uh, different things. And uh, I always emphasize the idea of an S shape or a Z. Uh, uh, that will take it into the painting. And, and when I talk about that in reference to that, I'm talking about like a stronger diagonal line of movement, the path or the road or whatever it might be that will take you into the painting. And right up in here, uh, I can add a little bit more of uh, the uh, trunks of trees and also that makes this area down and through here a little bit darker and just that corner a little bit darker. So I'm just going to spend a little time on this one, finishing this up. And uh, sometimes it doesn't have to be a complete picture that you're working on. Uh, sometimes you can just take an isolated uh, picture uh, of just a, a tree, one tree and just practice working off of, uh, of that. I use a sponge a lot of times, a natural sponge, if I want to get some texture of leaves in. But even that, you don't want to overwork too much. And, and nothing has to be over, overworked, if you will. Uh, if, do, do a lot less if you can. Now, this is some paint that was left over from uh, last uh, time I painted. Now, this could sit here and dry out and just as soon as I put water on onto that area, I, I, I can reactivate the color. You can get away with it. You can do that with watercolor, but other paints you can't. Oil dries out, forget it. You can't reactivate it. Acrylic, that's another uh, uh, paint that you can't uh, reactivate as easy as you can watercolor. So anyways, so right in, in the photograph, uh, uh, right in this corner down here, the lower, what would be my lower left corner. Uh, I'm just going to make this area right up in here a little bit darker through here. You're going to make it a little darker through here. And right over in here, I think I'm going to just make this a little bit, the uh, rocks in, in, the, in the water here, just outline them a little bit more. Right over in here, just a little bit of an outline, just pull it back up into the ground area. And then um, right here, I, I want to make the, uh, the woodland go, uh, go further back. So all you have to do is take it across in here, make that darker, a little bit darker through here, and your eye will kind of carry a little further back into the woods. You can add a few little trunks of trees in here too, suggest more trees back in there. Just uh, little, some little vertical lines just suggest something uh, else in there. But if you make the uh, woods a little bit deeper here, your eye can go back further into, into that area. Uh, 
So sometimes it's just a matter of a little bit of a touch up to your picture and that's all you have to do to it. I usually sometimes wait, you know, look at my picture the next morning and uh, uh, then it's had overnight to dry out and so that's what the colors have settled into. And uh, sometimes when, when your watercolor or any paint is uh, sort of still wet, um, it's hard to uh, uh, see what it's going to look like after it dries. It usually dries always lighter, no matter what the medium. It's the colors always dry out a little bit lighter. I just, just kind of carry that back into there a little bit more. Probably suggest a few more little trees, tree trunks in here. Fill that in a little bit more with some some uh, lines. And uh, so you, you really don't have to do too much more. You might want to go a little heavier on this corner, this lower corner. And uh, whether you want to do a little bit of something else, it's probably a little bit darker through here on this edge, okay, where the su sunlight doesn't get down into there as much. And I'm referring to a little bit to the uh, photograph to see what else I might want to add to this. I think it could use another tree off in here, break something off in, up into that area. Maybe a little darker than that. I'll just go over that a little bit more in here. It shows up. And uh, I don't know how much more you want to fuss with this, but that's about it. So, you know, just a few little touch-ups and there you go. So that's the picture from last time, okay? So I don't want to spend too much time on that. But I'm going to put it up on the, uh, over here on the uh, easel. And uh, we'll have that for our back background picture. There. Here we are. Uh, okay, now, now what I usually do, I well, obviously you start off with a blank piece of paper, right? Piece of white paper, watercolor paper. Now I normally use 140. That's the uh, the weight of the paper and the thickness of the paper, and then uh, it's, usually it's cold press, and that's the truth of the paper. Uh, there's three types of surfaces uh, with watercolor. You get your cold press, which is uh, kind of the most popular one in between being smooth. And then you have the other opposite, the, uh, where the paper is a little bit bumpier, and they call that rough. So you got hot press, smooth, cold press, probably the most popular surface to work from. And then you got your rougher, a little bumpier surface, and that's called rough. Okay, so now as far as the size of the paper, this is this is a quarter sheet, and by the time you put a mat on it and frame it, uh, it works well with a frame that's uh, 16 by 20 inches, 16 by 20 or 20 by 16, depending on whether it's vertical or horizontal. But uh, uh, the thing is, th those are probably the sizes that I go up to as far as. Uh, 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 how large the painting's going to be. I usually stick around, uh, you know, by the time you finish up 16 by 20 inches. So anyway, now, just to be on the safe side, I, I usually sketch uh, my picture out light with my uh, pencil. And uh, uh, I can see, I can see the, the, the pencil mark. But at home on TV, I've noticed that it's hard to pick up what my pencil sketch, unless I bear down a little darker with the pencil. But I don't spend an awful lot of time uh, with sketching it out, because I do a lot of the extra little texture or whatever, the color and, so and all that. I do that uh, uh, like uh, part of the drawing part of it. Okay, now I'm going to do something here. I'm going to have some trees. I'm going to put uh, like one two, uh, three, my, my popular uneven numbers, three, five, seven, whatever. And then uh, uh, this is going to have a little bit of a bridge. So I'm going to just put a little arch, a little arch in over off here. And then the uh, top edge is a bridge. Now, 
This is um, a picture that I, I've done before, so I, I can memorize it a little bit. But I like to work in that area down on North Main Street where, where the uh, Memorial Bridge is. It's right next to Knobby Craft and across the street. Well, actually, there across the street is Knobby Craft on one side, which is not that active anymore, I guess. And then the, uh, the other side of the road is uh, Blackington Inn. And right in that area there, it's a nice little area. They used to have a little playground, uh, and it's still there, but there's no uh, equipment uh, for children to play on now. Uh, oh, that's kind of been removed uh, and so forth. But uh, um, it's, st it's still a nice little area. To, it's uh, quiet there, and there's plenty of parking space in, 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 along the driveway that goes in back of uh, what used to be Knobby Craft. Uh, um, so here we go. So you, you got this little arch in here. Um, the opposite side is a lot of trees. The whole thing has a lot of trees in it. These can be birch trees if you want them to be. And then, of course, here's my diagonal movement of the water. The water comes in and goes around the bend here, underneath the bridge. So that's how that works. Okay. Let me go over a little bit more with my marker, so it will show up more on, on TV. Um, you can use any color marker you want, other than maybe the lighter colors. They might not contrast in, in, enough, so I use a brown or a black marker. Um, I don't know if I have a brown one here, but I can find something that's darker here. Oh, uh, maybe this would work, hopefully. That's purple, though. I, I want to see if I've got something. I know we got a large one here somewhere. We can get away with using this one, too. It's a little bit larger, but I use sort of the edge of it. Now, what I'm going to do here, uh, over in this area, I'm just going to make a little loop here, like an arch, right? That's going to be uh, the bridge, right? And then uh, the top edge of the uh, the bridge is uh, where the cars go over. It's, it's going to be in there. And then uh, what we're going to have is in in the background, we're going to have some trees. There's going to be quite a few trees off in this area. We're just uh, just kind of push them in a little bit. And then um, in the foreground, the water is going to be on an angle. It's going to come down through here. And of course, it's going to be wider. Uh, as it comes towards you, so it creates the illusion of the uh, depth. You might see a little bit of the uh, land in back there somewhere. Now, uh, over in here, we're going to have a lot of shrubs and bushes, but you can put, uh, this is going to be on this side. You don't want the trees to be, uh, you know, the same distance away. So what we're going to do, we're going to have this tree here uh, start the base of the tree a little bit lower. That could come up into here, and you see some of the surface roots, you know, of that. And then there's another tree, that's number two tree, that's going to be in here. And then uh, let's put something, a third something, that's going to be in there. Now I've got some room back here. Uh, so actually what's back here could be uh, across the street, you might see a house or something. Uh, but we can uh, save time if we just fill that in with some trees over here uh, in that area. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Let's have some things coming into here. Some trees over on, on the opposite side of the uh, water. I guess that this could be part of Ten Mile River, but I'm not sure. I don't want to... <laughs> I think Ten Mile River kind of winds down through Attleboro. It's a very, very shaky winding bridge, uh, not bridge, but you know, waterway. Uh, but now, here we go, trees up in here. So that's basically uh, the, uh, the amount of sketching that I do. And uh, I don't spend a, a lot of time on it. Uh, what, what you have to be careful with in, uh, in art, you can get too bogged down with all the little fussy things you can add to it. But I usually put all that uh, that into the picture, you know. 
uh, as we go along, I paint that in. But as far as uh, sketching, I, I do the minimal amount of sketching. Because otherwise, if you get too fussy with every individual little piece of wood or, or leaf or something, you're going to spend so much time being fussy fussy that you probably won't have time to <laughs> finish it. You should, this size paper, uh, uh, this, th this is only a quarter sheet, and it's 11 by 15 inches. So you can finish this in, in within maybe a reasonable amount of time, an hour and a half, two hours, depending on the subject. Now some, some of the subjects get very fussy, you know, doing portraits and, and uh, fancy ornament type things. Flowers can take a little bit longer to do. But as far as an uh, outdoor picture, uh, uh, you know, just some trees, bushes, and some water or something, or, or a little footpath. Some of these things, they can, you can kind of whip them together a little bit faster. Okay, so now you might see a little bit of daylight coming through. Uh, so I'm using some of the paint from uh, last time. Now, this has dried out a bit, so what you want to do uh, before you get started, let's take a little bigger brush that holds more water. Um, this is leftover paint. And all you have to do is put a couple of drops on each one of those areas, and you can, that reactivates the paint, water. The only color, uh, the only media that you can do that with is watercolor paint. Uh, like I said, the other paint, once it dries, forget it. You can't reactivate it with, with anything you might put into it. So anyway, so let's start off with, uh, I'm just going to wet up in here, show maybe a little bit of sky coming through up near the top. All right. So this is just wetting the paper with water. They call it a wash. Here we go. Get that, get some wet, get some wet in there. Now, I probably won't have as much blue showing through by the time I get the leaves in, but we'll just put a dash of some blue in through here. I always indicate, I always know where the center is. So I, and I know where, um, you know, where the half wave mark is, uh, vertically, vertically, as well as horizontally, I put a little mark on the edge. I sort of just draw it out. You don't want to spend too much time with anything that you do. You just wet the paper, just get some color in there. Now, while we're at it, you might as well do a little bit of the blue of the water in through here. Have that run, it's running through. There might be a little bit of white water, but you know, in this particular area, the water runs very slow. It's very slow moving. The land is sort of fairly level, so there's no elevation where uh, it cascades down at all. Um, on the other side of the road here, there is a, used to be a little bit of a dam, but that, that over the years, bro got broken down a bit. So it does, it's not as, a, as, as effective as a dam anymore. So let's just stash some water through here, it's blue. Now, I didn't wet this. I, this is painting wet on the dry, which is fine. Uh, but the thing is, you, you want to be able to get some color on your paper. Uh, it's not scary, because yesterday was Halloween, so you can use that scary word. But uh, uh, it's, it's not something that uh, you should uh, be too hesitant about. If you take some of your color, and you're putting color in wherever, you know, you'd like to have some, some autumn trees in here, Let's add the yellow first. I always use my lighter colors for the, uh, you know, the base color, and then I put the co other colors on top of that. But you're going to have some trees off here. You're going to have a little bit of this in, in the foreground, maybe. Uh, let's fill this in. Now, you can use different shades. You can use uh, uh, some Rossiana. A uh, little darker shades of color. Let's, put, let's go over here. Here, here you go. See, see, you can drop that in and uh, whatnot. Now, I'm forever moving around. Uh, you, you, you notice that I don't 
particularly pay, stay in one spot. I'm constantly, if I, I'm using a particular color, I always introduce it somewhere else uh, at least two or three times, if not more, in somewhere in, in the painting. So it's, it's just a base color and you, you can work on top of that. If, the, if your color comes in, if it comes in too, a little bit too uh, heavy and forms a puddle, you might want to just pull that puddle uh, out because it's going to take a little bit longer to dry if you kind of leave the puddles in there. But you see, already um, g g giving this some color, obviously uh, filling it in. Now, let's see what else. Uh, well, let's try a little bit of sort of an orangey color. Again, just drop it in. If it's a little bit heavy, just water it down and put some of that color off over here. And maybe we put some on, off around the base of some of the trees and shrubs and things on the opposite side. Now, you, you, sometimes you can hold the you know, brush tight like this d down near the, the ferrule, but you might want to be strike a balance somewhere up in here. There's a lot of artists, they hold the brush way up at the tip, and some even add extensions onto a brush so that they can kind of stand back away from it while they're, you know, they're painting. Um, I don't go to that extent, but... Okay, you got some heavier puddles here, so I've taken some water there from there and then put it over into here. But automatically, by distributing the color, you're creating this harmony of, uh, of, of using the paint. I didn't put a false border with the tape around today. Um, I'm running out of masking tape at home, so um, I said, I don't want to lose up the, use up all, all of my masking tape before I can get to a store again. Let's drop some of that in here. Now that might be a little bit too heavy, so you might want to take and pull it out, pull it down, put some over here, repeat it up in the corner. Okay. Go it in here. See how you can kind of jump around a little bit, wiggle the brush around, push and pull if you want. You want to make like uh, shrubs. You can make it look like shrubs in there or tall grass, whatever you want to do with it. If that's a little bit too dark, you can just drop some water on top. Take a piece of paper towel, blot it. Pick up some of that color out of there. See how you can lighten it up quite quite a bit in a hurry. Okay, jump around here. There we go. Oh, how about right across there? Right in a little bit into here. What I like about this season, uh, uh, autumn, is, is that, and most artists love autumn because you can introduce a lot of color. And you really get some color into your paintings if you do an outside painting. You can work, you can work outside to some extent if it's a warmer day. But uh, once you get down to freezing, forget it was watercolor because it is water that will freeze and sometimes it gets a little bit slushy on your paper. So watercolor probably is something that you tend to do when the weather obviously is not freezing. Let's, let's do a little bit in the foreground down around the base here. That's a little bit deep in there, so I'm gonna blot that Lift some of that out. Yeah. You can actually paint sometimes with paper towel, wipe the towel or with with paint on it. Okay. I think sometimes if you get to a point where you can work a little bit looser and more spontaneous, I think you especially with watercolor, I think the end results uh, come out a little bit better. 
when you get bogged down and get too fussy, then you have problems with it, or can have problems. Okay, let's go out to the edge here. You see too much white, you just hide it. Put some color into it. You know, it can still be light. You can still have some light coming through it, but you don't have to make it that. Just keep it, you don't have to keep it solid white. Okay, let's fill that in. Okay, let's see what we're doing. Now you can refer to, you, I can refer to the one, this picture that I worked on uh, with this other picture in back of me, but you don't have to, you just, you know, at random you might want to do something else with it. Make some texture in there, just tap with your brush. You can use a sponge too. I, I use a sponge a lot of time just for texture of the leaves, especially the leaves in, in that might be on the ground in the foreground. They're going to be more noticeable, the texture of the leaves here. You know, so they'll show up individually a little bit more like that. Okay. All right. Now, depends on how much more you want to dabble and distribute the color. Um, but uh, the, the, the idea is to get a lot of paint on the paper in a hurry, if you can. And uh, kind of think about it in advance, uh, you know, how you're going to do this. Uh, if you're really going to spend some time, I usually do a value sketch on a little piece of paper like the size of a postcard. And I do a, a value sketch of uh, just using marker, maybe black, and emphasize, you know, what area is going to be a really darker value and what's going to stay lighter. So you, you have different ranges of value that you use. Again, you want some texture, just tap. But tap where the paint's set, setting up to dry, otherwise it spreads around and you lose that little dot that you, you wanted to show for some uh, leaf texture. Some in here. Okay, you get kind of the idea of it. Okay, now, uh, as far as the bridge goes, it can be sort of like a, a grayish color. Uh, you can use some of that Payne's Gray for the bridge. And, whoops, that's a little bit dark. <laughs> Let's take some of that out, put, pull it around. Yeah, that's better. I think the, the bridge is sort of a brick cement type of texture. If you don't have the picture, you can make it any any way you want it to be. Something like that. And have it kind of fade out and back here somewhere. Just fade into the, into the backgrounds. What you don't want to do is stop sh too short. Uh, some people, they leave too much white. No, you could carry it over, carry it in back right out into here, right to the edge of the paper. I think it's better to do that than to come up too sharp. Okay, there you go. Whatever you want to add to, to this, you want to put some more detail in there, you can do that, some texture on this side, so, some more texture over up in here, you know, Hide that if you want. Wherever, wherever you have too much white, you want to always just fill it in somehow. Uh, for the most part, if they're going to be birch trees, sometimes I just put masking tape down to protect the white. And I actually utilize the uh, white of the drawing paper for the bark on the tree. And then I just put some little markings here and there 
uh, on that and then put a cast shadow on one side and you get yourself maybe like the texture of a, a birch tree. I'll show you how that works. Let's put some shadow right up on this edge here, like this. Go right along that edge. Kind of just disappear up into there. Okay, bring that down. Now, if you want that to be a little bit darker, just go, give it an extra little coat of paint over here. Bring that down into here, around the base. I usually make the base of the tree a, a lot darker. Okay, something like that. And then, uh, I'm just borrowing some paint there. Yeah, okay. Just put some markings on you. If you want that to be a birch tree. Okay, on either side. You don't, you don't want to make the markings uh, even, you know, like a ruler you know, marking. But, uh, you know, in, in places, you can put little specks on there, uh, like the bark might be lifting off the tree or something. You can do that. And uh, if you want, you can put a little bit of shading on this side, too. Just keep it a little bit lighter. But it can, it can be like a, bir a birch tree there. You want to put another, this could be another birch in here. Now, if you've covered something up, uh, if you put paint in there uh, and you say, oh, I wanted to leave that white. Well, you let that color dry out. You can pull it out a little bit more if you want. And then just touch it up with uh, some white. I always have some white around here somewhere. I don't know if I put it in the bag this time or not. But it's just a tube. I have a white acrylic paint. Or you can use, uh, they do have a uh, color. They have a white that they put out. Um, with, it's uh, called Chinese white. It's a white watercolor. But the only trouble is with that, it, uh, it uh, not, it's not as opaque, so if you want to go over an area to hide some of the color, you're better off to use opaque color. This looks like the white tube. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's some white there. So if I wanted to put white back up in there here, I just take a little bit of the white. Let's put it in here some of it. Yeah, just put it with the uh, some of the acrylic I had from before and then you can take make sure your brushes didn't have too much paint in it you know you, know, you want it to stay mostly white then you can come in and hit in here and touch up with the white wherever you want to bring some of the white back you can touch it up so that's one way of doing it now if I got too much color down here I can always lighten that up into here so um, the watercolor idea uh, of not being forgiven, uh, forgiving, uh, is kind of uh, not quite as true as uh, they say. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of watercolor because they're afraid that they can't uh, correct it. But if you have white acrylic paint, just, just touch it up. Uh, you can lift out sometimes some of the color but if you can't get it all out, uh, don't worry about it. Now, um, uh, I'll see what we want to do. I I'm going to start adding a little bit more texture. Uh, maybe putting some darker shading kind of in the corners. We'll work on that now a little bit more. And again, distribution of that color, you know, somewhere else in the painting. One, two, one, two, three places, four, five, you know, things like that. You're jumping around. Want to go a little dark with that, you can. Especially over here, you can go much darker. The, uh, uh, it, what's in the shade, you can fill that in. It's, just bump it up a little bit, kind of make it interesting over there on the other side. A 
we had a large bag of candy, you know, for trick or treating. <laughs> Yesterday was uh, Halloween, so we had no visitors. So I have to make the supreme sacrifice of eating that big bag of multi-colored candy bars, Hershey and all those, you know. What's the other one? Uh, peanut butter cup or something like that. And I'll have to, between now and Thanksgiving, probably have uh, some treats here and there. My wife wants me to save it for Thanksgiving, maybe, you know, if we put, put some out in the candy dishes, but sometimes a two-legged mouse in the house kind of gets into the candy. You know who the two-legged mouse is, don't you? Huh? You yeah. uh, know? So anyways. Okay, here we go. Again, you can keep keep thinking about you know what to do with the, some of the areas, and uh, fill fill in with color. If it's a uh, needs a uh, if there's too much white coming through, you, you're always safe to to go darker with some of the color. You don't want to have too much white coming through. Now what I'm doing now is mostly tapping with the brush. Uh, I'm not painting brush strokes at all. I'm just hit, hitting some of this with some paint. And I like to just distribute, you know, triangle, work off triangle. How much, how much time you want to spend on this depends on a lot of times how much time you, you might have left over, you know, to work, work on it. But uh, if you use a photograph, this, this has a lot of solid color in it. And the only thing that's really white in, in this particular picture would be the, uh, because of the water, you know, the aerated water flowing over the rocks and so forth. So you see a lot of white in that. But if it's a smooth, quiet water, you won't see so, so much white in it. You're gonna build up color. You might you go a little bit deeper with your color here and there along the, sh along the uh, where it's in the shadow. And then what you do with that is just take that and just take that blue and just pour it across. See, it's still white, it's a darker shading, but it's still flat, smooth, because the water itself is going to be smoother. Okay, just pour it across. And you can keep building that up as you go along. You'll probably see a little bit of it beyond the bridge or off here somewhere. You'll see probably uh, some land off there. You can fill that in back there. Maybe put some land in there. Now normally, well, I shouldn't say normally. A lot of times uh, you can hide uh, some of your uh, uh, pencil marks or you can hide some of your um, marker. Uh, but with the marker, uh, it's hard to hide it. So you almost have to use white out, you know, your uh, uh, white acrylic or whatever white you have. Um, you've got the, this, this Chinese white, but it might, not, it might not hide things as much, see, when you try to use it. It kind of goes, it kind of uh, absorbs into the uh, paper more, so you, you need something a little bit more uh, opaque than the, than the Chinese white. But, they have Chinese white that you can use. Okay. Yeah. This back here. All of this can be built up a little bit darker, you know, when you get through. 
if you got a spot that probably your eye goes to, like in here, it's really dark, you can take your brush, wiggle it up, uh, some paint, hit it with a blotter, and you can soften that color out if it gets a little bit too much. Now this is also, uh, if it's dry enough, you can use a thin, maybe a thinner marker, and uh, somewhere I have some real thin ones in there. But you can add some branches coming in into this uh, here and there, especially with a tree that's in the foreground. You might see some little branches coming out of it. You know, you can add that, but you have to wait until the paint dry, drier. But there's a lot you can put into your picture, okay? You can keep building that up here and there. You can add some little specks on the tree, like bug bites, things like that. Okay? So, it's just a matter of how, how much uh, darker you want to go with the color. I think now you, you need a little bit more than just this, right? You need to kind of go a little bit deeper. So, that's easy enough. Just look, look at the colors you have and uh, just stop putting some darker shades in there. And, uh, but make sure you keep your uh, paper towel handy because you, 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 may buy, you may get darker, but you may not want it that dark. So what you have to do uh, is take immediately before it can settle in too much and just hit it with a, with a paper towel. Just soften it out. Okay, like that. I always do something darker up in the corners. I like to make these corners a little bit darker up in the here. You can almost show some of the outline of the, the contour of the tree that way too. Uh, bring some of that out in here. Um, see how you make that corner interesting? You can do something over here that's a little bit deeper on this side. Uh, that, that you can see in this picture here. It's usually something that's a little bit darker through here. Have some taller grass in there. See now when you do grass, you take your brush, a pointed brush, round brush, and you can just lift up. Lift up and it goes from thick to thin. See how that works? And fill that in. You, you might want to fill it in a, a, a little bit more because if you leave too much white, it might look like you had a dusting of snow, uh, which is you know, maybe something a little bit later on, not too far later on. Take some of that out. It's, you might not want that to be that white in there. So you just hide it, give it a little bit, bit of a wash. Over here, same thing. You don't want to see too much white. Just fill it in. And you can take different shades, you know, uh, of color. Doesn't have to be all the same. But if you've got a color, make sure you repeat it one, two, three, four places, or five, whatever. Put, use it somewhere else. And automatically, you don't realize it, but automatically you're, you're kind of filling in your picture um, without think, having to worry too much about it. We can go deeper now, put some darker values in there if you want. Keep building it up. You can get away with uh, being a little bit brighter with watercolor too. Sometimes I, yeah, you see watercolors in the paintings and uh, they look so dull. They too much gray or something. Uh, and I like them to have a little bit more uh, you know, life to the painting. And I, I always want my paintings to look like a painting, not like a photograph. I don't think that that's a big problem, for me anyways. 
might be for some other people, but I, 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 I would never be accused of being too photographic with the way I paint, that's for sure. I don't think so. Anyways, you, now, if you want to fill some of these in, you can do that like you did here. Some of them, the trees don't have to be uh, birch trees. You know, just fill it in. You're going to have a lot of tall grass in here. Whatever. Bushes, hedges. You don't need so much white showing through in the background. That's why I'm filling it in a little bit more. Over here, too, same idea. You're going to fill that in. You might have some darker shades, you know, underneath. You might get more shadow here around the, the base of the trees. So you can kind of fill a lot of that in. It's a good brush, good size brush to use. What is it? Number or what? <laughs> oh, I can't find a number on it. It looks like it's 10 or 11 or 12. Okay, here we go. You can, remember I said lift up so if you want to make things look like branches or twigs or whatever. Hide that white. Get rid of some of that white. Okay. Now, every so often, sort of stand back or or uh, squint and look at it and see, you know, if things are coming in, if if they need a little bit more oomph to show up, like I'm, the bridge is almost disappearing somehow, you can always work that a little bit darker. You might see the liner inside the bridge, you know, go something like that in here. Not exactly like that, but you know, you see a little bit more shadow underneath there, or three-dimensional. Okay. A lot of tapping. Um, But what we're doing is hiding. You want to hide some of that white. Fill it in. T touch up the bridge a little bit more. Give it a little bit more, you know, shadow underneath the bridge. <clears throat> Jump around, move around. You never want to get bogged down into a corner or anything like that. Just keep moving your brush around. You might want to add some more branches up in there. You can show some things sh sh coming through. Use use other pictures for reference. You can use the same picture in something that you're doing, you know. Okay. Now that's it's got sort of a little bit of a white edge there, so we can quiet that down right through here and pull pull that out. Push it up into here. You have to know where you want to push things, uh, which way to push them. You know, when you're working, keep that in mind, where you want certain things to go. Um, okay, we can come back and work on that after probably when it's a little drier. I can put more t texture of the stone in there. But you have to use a smaller brush and let it dry. Keep hiding that white if you can. Throw it right in. 
Okay, you can see how we're coming along as we go here. That's too dark. You can just hit it with a paper towel. Okay. Now, here's another thing, too. Later on, you can also take your marker and you can step over the marker, too, and put some of that texture in. It doesn't have to be everything with the brush. You know, I think I'm going to take some of that out of here. Kind of fill it in solid. Pull that up into here more. Go right to the edge. Now you can still put a mat around this, of course. You'll lose some of the edge, but that's all right. That's why I don't do too much with the corners and the edge because you're going to hide most of that anyways. It's a little bit strong in there. Take that out. Erase it. So you can have some fun with watercolor. You know, you don't have to get too too heavy into it. Uh, we've got a lot of color and orange in here. Let's take some of that and drop some of that color off here somewhere. Now, if you want that color to be more subdued, all you do is take a little bit of blue and drop some blue right on top of that color you just put in and see how you can mix the color on the paper. Let's get this out of your way so you can see what I'm doing up at the corner. i get that out. See how that works? Yeah, you can pull that paint around. I've almost hidden as most of the blue sky. That happens. You carry away and say, oops, I forgot to do the blue sky. However, if you want, you can take, if you get a little bit of blue left, you can still put some of that blue sky back in. Too much white in there. Too much. Okay, this gets a little bit, uh, let's break this up a little bit more. More texture of leaves. Now, if you get too much white up in there, just touch up the edges. A lot of white here, see it? Okay, just hide that a bit. Let's put some darker color into that. Okay, a little darker up into here on the opposite side there. You see how we're starting to fill it in, fill it in. You have to know when to stop though. You can't keep, you can't keep it going, you know, forever. It gets too much. Get some of that, hide some of that white on the edge. Now, of course, when you put a mat on this, you can lock in. You lose a little bit of the edge. That's why I don't worry about the edge. I just, you know, just have it sort of disappear. Like over here, just, just you know, fill it in. Okay, we're down in here now. Um, now, 
you can put a little bit more ground in there if you want. You don't have to have that end up that much uh, like that. You could do this, you know, extend that right out to the edge. Ooh, that works. And then you can take a little bit of your paint and just hit that, hide the white, you know, something like here. Put some of that in there. Put some over here. Just quiet it down a bit. So we're starting to get there, starting to close it in quite a bit. There's so much more you can do to this. Uh, back here, you can show more, a little bit more contrast underneath the bridge, and that would bring the bridge out. You sort of lose the bridge in here somewhat. So you can either make that lighter by putting white into it, or you can go a little bit darker with a darker shade of color in there, just to make it stand out more. Okay, in here, if you don't want to see so much white in there, just take a little bit of blue. I'm running out of blue, by the way. I think I got a little bit over here I can borrow from. Yeah, I can. Okay, here you go. Yeah, you can just kind of break that up a little bit more. You don't need that much white in there. All right, and that, that will help. Um, you can... Um, Show a little bit more cast shadow on the edge here, and that that will bring that out. Now, if you want, you can add a little bit more blue back up in there, uh, right across through here, something like that. But pull this back out, just make it sort of smooth. And if it's quiet water, you don't see any aerated water, it's going to be sort of a more of a quiet, flat, flat color that you can put in for the water across there. Now, this is up to you. You can show, you know, if you want to put a little bit more blue or, some, or purple or something up in the trees, you could do something like that too. Well, anyhow, I've got so busy working on my picture today that I forgot to watch the clock so we'll have to stop here but just gives you an idea how you can keep working your color in but you have to know when to stop so here we go brushes up and we'll see you next time